Hello, and a very warm welcome to LNT Royal YouTube channel. This video offers insight into the Sussex's Netflix deal. We hear firsthand from Netflix's co CEO, Reed Hastings. He seems so very excited. We can't wait. I had to ask, of course, about the mega deal with Meghan Markle and Prince Harry and how it came about. It's going to be epic entertainment. Um, so excited about uh, that deal. Um, well, look, you know, they're smart. They were shopping it around across, you know, all of the major companies. And I think we really put together the best uh, complete package. And, you know, we're going to do a, a wide range of entertainment with them. I can't tell you any more than that about it at this point, but um, I think it'll be some of the, the most exciting, most viewed content next year. And will Meghan Markle be acting in any of these productions? You know, the real focus for them is on being producers and on uh, building that production uh, capacity. Um, so uh, that's the, the key thing is, you know, they've uh, developed a, a great eye for story and we'll be working with them on that basis. And so on to other news and Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's list of strict demands for their speaking events has today been leaked. In an exhaustive four page document, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex outline their stringent rules for any speaking engagement, including that they have the final say in who introduces them. The couple reportedly signed with the Harry Walker Agency, an exclusive agency that boasts it represents the best in motivational speakers. Earlier this year, with it thought the couple could charge $1 million per speech. The Telegraph today revealed the stipulations issued by Harry and Meghan, including that the fee must be paid in advance. The leaked virtual event request form states, the choice of introducer and moderator will be at the final discretion of the speaker. The fee will need to be paid directly from the contracting organization's account. The full audience list must also be provided, and whether the couple need to wear business or casual attire. Other commands insist details of the sponsors must be listed, asking, if you were to lose one or more of the above sponsors, would your organization still be able to move forward with this event? Harry and Meghan started to hit the speaking circuit before the coronavirus lockdown hit, with the prince giving a speech in Miami for J.P. Morgan in February. The royal was reportedly paid a six-figure sum for the keynote speech, which saw him reveal he had been in therapy for years after the death of his mother, Princess Diana. The couple are following in the footsteps of other big names to sign up with the agency, which also represents Barack and Michelle Obama, Bill and Hillary Clinton, and Oprah Winfrey. Last week it was revealed Meghan and Harry had signed a deal with Netflix to produce content that gives help to audiences, with the deal estimated to be worth $146 million. Multi-million pound deal just days after the deal was announced, the couple confirmed they had paid back the full $3.1 million spent on refurbishing their home in the UK Grogmoor Cottage. The couple are now based in the US, recently buying up a huge $10.4 million Santa Barbara home to start their new life with son Archie. The leaked list of stipulations from the couple come after they quit the royal family earlier this year. And the author of Finding Freedom and biography released last month detailing the couple's decision to quit the firm, claimed they had been frustrated at weeks coming from the palace. Author Omid Scobie claimed the couple struggled with the royal family's no-comment policy. The belling it at HR crisis, Omid continued, to have members of their team or family that they are part of being involved in some of their leaks was an extremely unpleasant situation for them and made them feel even more unsupported and unprotected. But you have to remember this is one very big establishment and what lies within are three very different households and agendas, all looking after their own bosses and own agendas. It left them very exposed. In August, Omid said Harry and Meghan were told not to defend themselves after Palace Insiders Brandon in Oven News, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry's new home is putting the royal brand at risk. When Prince Harry and Meghan, Duchess of Sussex announced they would be leaving the British royal family, their financial situation became a huge topic of discussion. 
since a big portion of the royal family's living and travel expenses are funded by taxpayer dollars, royal fans and experts were concerned that the Sussexes' lavish lifestyle would be funded as they went off to live their lives. This is not the case. During their announcement, the pair stated that not only would they be returning the $3 million in taxpayer funding they used to renovate their Windsor estate, Frogmore Cottage, they would also be working to be financially independent. Now, the pair have purchased a home in Santa Barbara, California, but due to the coronavirus, COVID-19, pandemic, they've not been able to earn any money just yet. Now an expert is concerned all of this is going to put the royal brand in turmoil. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's finances have been a huge topic of debate. From the moment they tied the knot, the Sussexes' marriage has been somewhat of a financial headache. Though they combined their money for a total net worth of $30 million, Meghan is an American citizen while the Prince is a UK citizen. Since the Duchess pays US taxes and will continue to do so now that she is living back in the States, the private royal finances could now be subject to scrutiny. It has been said that one major point of contention Queen Elizabeth II had with the couple was their lavish spending. Dylan Howard and Andy Tillett write in their book, Royals at War. Harry's spending transformation is revealed as one of the fundamental factors behind the deep fissure that opened between him and his brother, Prince William. The fact that Meghan splashed so much cash rang alarm bells with the traditionally conservative Queen Elizabeth. There has even been some question about whether the pair can afford their new $14.7 million home, which will reportedly cost them over $4.4 million to run annually. The pair allegedly has a $9.5 million mortgage. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are proving there is a new way to be royal. Though they are no longer senior working royals, the pair have still been subject to scrutiny for speaking up against colonization and with Meghan urging women to vote. However, a lot of this seems to stem from the fear that it's putting cracks in the monarchy's archaic ideals. The Kim Kardashian Principi author Jitendra Sadev said, The Meghan and Harry brand has always been very disruptive. They're going to show us all a different way in which royal family members can live. Letting people into who they are, because at the moment we don't really know who Meghan and Harry are. We just know that they're part of the royal family. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's Santa Barbara home is putting the royal brand at risk. With such a massive house, no current cash flow, and their determination to be independent of the royals, one royal expert feels like Meghan and Harry are putting the royal family at risk. Royal editor Russell Myers explained on Pod Save the Queen, you can bet your bottom dollar that people in the palace are getting a bit nervous about this. Now the fact is the coronavirus crisis has put a pin in their balloon of dreams at the moment, and they can't move forward with anything. Prince Charles stops funding them in about six months' time, and they have to keep signing endorsement deals and sponsorship deals to stay afloat, and what does that mean for the actual royal brand? It doesn't look like the Sussexes are too worried about this. They are currently shopping a secret project in Hollywood and paying back their Frogmore Cottage money. Finding Freedom Co. author Omid Scobby explained. Both of them are extremely liquid when it comes to their assets. Harry brings a lot to the table himself, and Meghan lives off residuals from suits, and the many appearances that she's done in other projects too. Another report. Prince Harry's friend lost him after Prince was wooed by Meghan Markle and Hollywood glamour. Prince Harry and Meghan Duchess of Sussex officially stepped down as senior royals on March 31st and have been residing in California ever since. But the book Finding Freedom, Harry and Meghan and the Making of a Modern Royal Family has put the spotlight back on what their lives were like in the royal family, as well as how Harry's relationship with his old friend changed when he married Meghan. Harry cared more about being with Hollywood stars than old friends. Tom in Skip known as Skippy was one of Prince Harry's Eton College buddies. The two were once very close but things reportedly changed when Harry wed the former Suits star. Finding Freedom authors Omid Sfabi and Carolyn Duran claimed Skippy was basically cut out of Harry's life for making a suggestion that Harry and Meghan lived together for a bit before tying the knot. 
Fairy didn't take kindly to Skippy's advice and was hurt by it. The biographers also said that Skippy was shunned from the Duke and Duchess of Sussex's evening wedding reception, that Hollywood heavyweights like George Clooney and Oprah Winfrey made the guest list. The authors wrote, George and Amal Clooney pulled up to the reception in a silver Audi. Notably absent were Skippy, who had questioned the prince's relationship with Meghan and his wife Lara. They were invited to the wedding ceremony and lunchtime reception, but didn't make the cut for the evening bash. According to the authors, Skippy felt that Harry was suddenly more into the glitz and glam of these Hollywood celebrities and wanted to hang out with them instead of his old friends. Scobby and Durand added, at a brunch the day after the wedding. Skippy told friends, Meghan has changed Harry too much. His Eaton pal said the prince was awed by the likes of the Clooney's and Oprah. We've lost him, Skippy concluded. Harry found that Los Angeles wasn't exactly what he thought. Harry may have been wooed by the allure of the land where Hollywood A. Listers work and live, but when he and Meghan actually picked up and moved there, multiple reports claimed that the prince hated it. In March, the Sussexes moved into Tyler Perry's mansion in Beverly Hills while they searched for their permanent home. Royal expert Angela Mahler told Vanity Fair that Harry didn't have any friends in Los Angeles and during the coronavirus. COVID-19 pandemic realized he missed his old pals and structured life. In August, the pair left the media mogul's residence and purchased a home for $14 million in Monticello which is in Santa Barbara County about 90 miles outside of Los Angeles. A source told said, Megan visited Monticello in her teens and fell in love. Moving there was always an option, but to begin with, she and Harry wanted to give Los Angeles a shot. Unfortunately, Harry absolutely hated it. The timing was so wrong amid the pandemic and Please support Growing LMT Royal Channel by subscribe channel, like and share videos are your support is the motivation for our to produce better videos. Don't stop.